What are you doing? Why do you have your own career day booth? Well, everyone's always telling me to be myself, so that's what I'm doing. Are you interested in a fascinating career in being me? I'll be you if you be me. Never mind. Alex, have you seen the action news booth? I gotta find it before someone signs Baxter Knight as their mentor. Baxter Knight, the weatherman? That's who you're choosing as your mentor. He's not a weatherman. He's like a weather hero. His earmuff alerts have saved me from many an earache. And luckily, those earmuffs have saved you from hearing what people say. What a doofus you look like with them on. I wish I was wearing them right now. Mm. Oh, there's Baxter. So, my little friend, being a weatherman is the only career here where you get to be on TV. Does that sound like something you'd like to do? <laughs> Mr. Knight, Mr. Knight, hey, I'm, uh, I'm Justin Russo. I'm a huge fan. You know, I've been following you ever since you introduced Mr. Nimbus, your cloud hand. Put on your galoshes, it's gonna be a wet one. And <laughs> then with the rain. <laughs> you remember Mr. Nimbus? Kid, you want a mentor? Do I have Mr. Nimbus pajamas made out of cloud curtains? I do. Oh. oh my gosh. There's one of the many singing policemen who does a lot of singing at ball games and stuff. Leaving, Miss Russo. And which career counselor have you roped in? Well, Mr. Larry Tate, you know what I wish? I wish you were available to be a mentor because you have all the qualities I'm looking for in a mentor. You're a men, which is in the word mentor. <laughs> and bolo tie. A nice tap dancing bojangles. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'll take you up on that little offer. Let's mosey on down to the principal's office. Deputy. Well, I suppose I was gonna end up there at some point anyway. Well, you know, everything's gonna be a breeze. At the end, we'll no doubt justify the means. You can fix any problem with the slightest ease. Yes, please. <laughs> we might find out it'll go to your head when you write a report on a book you never read. With the snap of your fingers, you can make your bed. That's what I said. Guess what? Someone's been putting two pickle spears in the to-go orders? Not even close. Today was career day at school, and two pickle spears? <laughs> Outrageous! This has mom's sloppy but generous fingerprints all over it. That's it! No more pickles! She's ruined it for everyone. <laughs> Baxter Knight! Hey, uh, what are you doing here? Hey, Justin. I had some time before the evening news. And I wanted to come by and tell you that I can't be your mentor. Why not? Because you need someone who's successful. I haven't nailed a forecast in months. I've been letting everyone down. Commuters, roofers, people with perms. Oh, come on, man. It's not that bad. If I don't get the next forecast right, they're gonna fire me. Oh, pfft. Where'd you hear that? From one of the five weathermen sitting in the lobby with their resumes. <laughs> Look, kid. Take a tip from Mr. Nimbus. Never love anything too much. It will eventually disappoint you. Dad, is that true? Does everything eventually disappoint you? Most things. But, but then you find the one thing that doesn't, and you marry her. And then she puts two pickles in the to-go orders, and you you start to wonder. <laughs> yeah. 
You're absolutely right, Max. Singing and the law are very similar. You come in strong mm. and rely on your backups to do most <coughs> of the work. But singing is just a hobby of mine. I don't mix it with police work. Why? But you're a great policeman and a great singer. When you find two things that you're great at, you gotta do both. It shows you're a genius. <laughs> Take the platypus, for example. Great at being a duck, great at being a fish. Well, it's not that simple. You see, I'm afraid. If I mix my singing with my police work, the other guys will never take me seriously as a cop. Yes, they will. What's not serious about... You have the right to remain silent. <laughs> I have to hog tie a few loose ends. Why don't you and your ironic mug have a seat? The place I bought it from said they put my picture in it for five more bucks. You want to go in half, please? No, okay. Have you seen this graffiti around school? It seems someone keeps writing the word salmon under the no smoking signs. As my new deputy, these are the sort of varmints I need your help to wrangle in. Well, it's not that hard. I mean, look at the way salmon is written. Do you remember last year when someone wrote Sal on all the lunch tables? It's the same handwriting. And look, the marker smudges means he's left-handed. Drags his hand across what he's written. Lefty Sal's your guy. There's no one named Lefty Sal. Don't ruin my moment. Just... <laughs> it's the Sal that's left-handed. Amazing. I haven't seen detective work like this since Miami Vice went off the air. Now, get to work on this caseload, Crockett. Um, but, Mr. Larry Tate, I, I thought mentoring might be like you and me figuring out the new school holidays. Nope. Nowadays, we let the courts decide those. By the way, feel free to call me Tubbs. Don't worry, we do. Excellent. On. Here's the deal, New Yorkians. Tonight there will be a chance of snow. Back to you, Doug. Chance of snow? No, clear and mild. A chance of snow. Wow. Really put yourself out there. Oh, okay, you want me to put myself out there? Well, fine. Come on, clear and mild. Clear and mild. I got nothing to lose. Um, there will be snow in exactly half the city. It's gonna be split right down Waverly Place. Aw, he said our street name. Now let me make a prediction. We'll be looking for a new weatherman tomorrow. loses his job, it'll be a pity. Let's have snow over half of New York City. <laughs> Congratulations, Deputy Russo. Thanks to you, I made quite the roundup this morning. Mayonnaise in the soap dispensers. <laughs> Clever but not clever enough for crockin' tubs. I never knew there were kids worse than me in school. It's fun to solve crimes and get new ideas at the same time. Well, do you have anything new for me? Oh, sure do. Underwear on the statue, solved. Hallway of thumbtacks, solved. Substitute teacher monkey, solved. That was a hard one, wasn't it? Not really. I mean, once you realized it was a wig and he was holding the chalk with his foot. That was a really good wig. Well, keep up the good work, Russo. You make an excellent protege. Thank you, Mr. Larry Tate. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Tubbs. <laughs> uh, Harper, what, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just showing my protege how to rush through the halls really fast so you don't hear the laughter. And go. 
Hey, Russo. Hey, Sal. Did you grow in between PE and nails? Uh, hey, because of you, Larite busted me for writing no smoking salmon. That guy hates signs. Or salmon. No, Mr. Larry Tate hates when people break the rules. I never thought I'd see the day when Alex Russo went good. <laughs> Mr. Knight, what's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. I am back. My willy-nilly predictions have been spot on. A heat wave on 67th, a blizzard on 68th. No matter what I say, it all turns out to be true. I know. I got a sunburn on the way to my guitar lesson and a cold on the way back. Sorry, kid. I don't make the weather. I know. <laughs> I do. Let's do this. Look, Mr. Knight, I am I'm really happy you're getting your weather predictions right, but don't you think you should consult, I don't know, like a weather satellite or, or a barometer or that temperature sign above the bank, something? No need, kid. I'm going with my gut. Seems to be working. Oh, I'm on, I'm on. Excuse me, excuse me. Thanks, Doug. I am here on Waverly Place at the site of the historic 5050 snowstorm. Tonight, friends, brace yourselves for, uh, some hail. Yeah, hail. Why not? Uh, yeah, not just any hail. It's gonna be hail the size of candied yams. The size of candied yams? Seriously? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Please don't let Baxter and I fail. Make me some candied yam hail. and messing with the weather. Uh, who are you? Um, Mother Nature. Mother Nature? I thought you were supposed to be all, like, natural with, with sandals and birds flying around you. Yeah, yeah, I used to dress like that, but nobody took me seriously. <laughs> and you, what I wear to work is my business. I don't want to talk about this. I am here to talk about you. Come here. Now, why? Would you mess with the delicate balance of the Earth's weather patterns? Do you know how much I work to maintain this planet? <sighs> Three days a week. I don't know. It was my best guess. You asked, I answered. Sorry, I don't know. Look, um, um, I was trying to help my mentor. He's a meteorologist. And what is it with the hail? How does that help anybody? Free ice! I'm getting free ice! <laughs> This is nature. Mother. I'm really sorry. Yep, well, I'm sorry too. About what? <laughs> Be grateful. That could have been a wildfire. jobs is delivering news to Alex. Alex, do you know what's going on? They put this good citizenship award on your locker. A good citizenship award? That's low. Harper, you've got to help me. If I don't stop being good, one day I'm gonna wake up and be a doctor. Or even worse, the guy who drives the back end of a fire truck. Oh, gosh, you gotta help me. What do we do? I don't know. I can, I can, I can erase your tardy sheet. Ah, uh, never been tardy. You know, at the end of every school year when I buy myself an ice cream cake, it's for no tardies. You should be taking notes. Uh, how about you take this picture of all these horses? Oh, it's a mural. It's painted right on the wall. You might as well just give me a fire hat and a bell and call me a hero. How about you give me the key to the teacher's bathroom? Don't write that down. Fine. Just to start. <laughs> a lot of 
a second. I don't read. raining on you. Wow. Now I don't wish I had something to do with that. I used magic to help Baxter with his weather predictions. Mother Nature caught me, and this is my punishment. Wait a minute. You used magic to do something sneaky, and now you're coming to me to help you get out of it. Feels good, doesn't it? Except for this part right here. Are you gonna help me or not? Listen, I don't know how it happened, but I've turned good. So, you're like a day late, buddy. Just help me, please. I'm begging you. Fine, I'll help you. Lean away from the window. I don't want you to get water stains on Mr. Larry Tate's cowhide throat. Yeah, the good just doesn't stop. <laughs> so how did you get Mother Nature here before? I don't know. I just messed with the weather. And she showed up. What he did. Sweet potato hell, are you kidding me? I thought we talked about this. I can give you your own personal earthquake, you know. Hi. You must be Mother Nature. Sorry about the hail. We just didn't know how to contact you. Listen, Mother Nature, love your work. Big fan of this, really? But I don't think it's enough. Oh, really? He's sopping wet, and there's no chance of him getting dry. Oh, sure, he's wet, but what's the best we can hope for out of that? The flu. I mean, for what he's done to you, I just think he needs a more severe punishment. All right, I'm de-asking you to help me right now. Shh. So, are you packing lightning? Because I think about 30 gazillion volts will do him just fine. <laughs> Give me a sec. Is this your sister? Yes. OK, I think you've been punished enough. <laughs> now, listen, guys. I may have overreacted just a little bit, but um, things aren't going great with me, OK? And, um, and I need your help. Is it the dating trouble? Because I can really help you with that. <laughs> no, Alex, she's talking about the environment. You people need to understand that this is a delicate system. Every time you mess with the weather, it affects somewhere else. I think I found your dating problem. It's just nonstop talking about the weather, isn't it? No. <laughs> what Mother Nature is trying to say that instead of messing with the Earth, we should be helping it, like, like recycling or carpooling for less pollution or changing all of our light bulbs to CFLs. It's the squiggly one. <laughs> the one that looks like soft serve yogurt. Ow! <laughs> well, we can help you with that stuff. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard, but I recently turned good. <laughs> hey, do you see that? You stay here. I'll handle this. This could get dangerous. Use your voice to tell it. It's your most powerful weapon. <laughs> Stop! I know. You took too many papers. You only get one. Don't even think about running. You're not that cunning. You'll never, no, never, no, never get away. Oh! Oh, Mr. Brian, you let him get away. There was no... There was nothing I could... There was nothing I could do. What happened to your voice? I, I don't know. It must have something to do with getting hit by this vegetable-shaped piece of hail. <sighs> Officer Brian. Yeah? Without your voice, you're just another cop. And I need a mentor that can do two things. Now, if you'll excuse me. 
I'm gonna go to the zoo and find me a platypus. That guy's a real genius. Well, there's my little deputy. Yep. Guess people are just gonna have to get used to it. I'm just a good person. Are you? Your friend Harper and some seventh grader dressed just like her were caught coming out of the teacher's restroom. She's in a wagon load of trouble. Great. So everyone's in trouble but me. Wait a minute. I'm the one who gave her the key, and that's bad. Everyone's in trouble because of me. I am bad again! Fair enough. You'll be getting one month detention. A month? What? That's not fair. Sal got a warning, and he vandalized half the school. Maybe it doesn't seem fair, but there's a method to all this. You see, I fit the punishment to the person, not the crime. So, you're getting a month, and Harper's getting a hug and a stern, don't let this happen again. Your method is just busting me to the full extent of your made-up laws. Oh, Alex popped her gum. Let's make her stay back a grade or explain email to senior citizens. I understand how it may seem, but the truth is, there's nothing I can do to get through to Sal and the others. But you, Miss Russo, I haven't given up on. You see, I believe there's evil, and there's evil genius. Really? You think I'm an evil genius? That's so sweet. Now, you'll have to turn in your theoretical deputy's badge. Well, that was weird and meaningless. It was symbolic. Another one of my methods. Now get out! Mm. Let's see how Baxter's doing without me. And in other news, I am sad to report that my colleague and dear, dear friend, Baxter Knight, has entered into a suggested retirement. If you see him and he says it was a forced retirement, well, he's a liar. He was fired. There'll never be anyone as good as Baxter Knight. And on a lighter note, I am happy to introduce our newest weather person, Heather Nakatomi. Oh, brother. Heather Nakatomi. Wow. Eh, Baxter will be fine. <laughs> <laughs>